This video describes the Melly's technique for deep lamellar keratoplasty. The superior conjunctival flap is carefully dissected. Bleeding vessels are cauterized to prevent blood at the interface. This is meticulously performed as blood obscures the dissection plane. A scleral groove 200 microns deep, 5 mm wide and 1 mm behind the limbus is created with a stepped diamond blade. A pocket knife is used to dissect a scleral tunnel into the mid-periphery, being careful not to perforate. The diamond blade is used to create a long paracentesis temporally and aims to be self-sealing. Filtered air is then injected via Rycroft cannula to create a fully air-filled, moderately firm anterior chamber. The cannula should not be inserted too far into the anterior chamber. The air can be topped up by inserting just the tip into the paracentesis. The palfy knife end of a Morley lamella dissector is used to dissect to deep stroma and desmose membrane. A dark band reflex in front of the blade acts as a guide to depth. The blade can be tipped slightly downwards to accentuate the reflex. A silver calibre is used to firmly hold the edge of the scleral tunnel during the section. The lamella end of a Morley lamella dissector is inserted to split the plane at the established corneal depth. The dissection is performed from the middle of the cornea out to the periphery. To ensure the same plane is dissected, a slightly upward action is used. Downward action should be avoided as there is a risk of dissecting too deep and perforating. Keratoconus can be more difficult due to central corneal thinness. If a perforation occurs, the air bubble will leak through the hole. The dissection may be continued if the anterior chamber remains formed, otherwise conversion to a penetrating keratoplasty is indicated. Dissection is performed out to the peripheral cornea. The air in the anterior chamber is removed via Rycroft cannula on a 2 mL syringe. Helon is injected to fill the lamella space. Further dissection out to the limbus can be performed at this stage if necessary. The centre of the cornea is marked and a Hesburgh barren trefine is placed on the cornea aligning with the crosshairs. The suction is applied and the trefine wound down until a gusher helon occurs. The suction is then released and the trefine removed. Corneal scissors are used to complete the section of the cap. The scissors are held with the blades vertical to create a perpendicular edge. Care must be taken to avoid perforation of the underlying desmose membrane. The helon is fully irrigated to avoid viscoelastic in the interface. The endothelium of the donor button is stained with fission blue. A dry micro sponge is used to completely remove the endothelium. The 
The graph is placed in the lamella bed. Four tenonylon cardinal sutures position the graft. A deep continuous tenonylon running suture is placed and the scleral tunnel is closed with a tenonylon horizontal mattress. The running suture is adjusted to minimise astigmatism and checked with a Morlay rule. Subconjunctival steroid and antibiotic is injected. Postoperatively, topical steroid is administered and tapered over three months. The sutures are removed at six to 12 months.